But one day I was in New York City and I was with a group of young kids and their moms, all single moms, um, about 80% African American, and they were in a really tough environment. You know, the, the husbands weren't there, the mothers were struggling, and the kids were really struggling, and a lot of them been through abuse. And I was telling them, listen guys, you know, your past doesn't equal your future. It doesn't matter what you've been through. Your biography is not your destiny. You can create it. And I was telling them this, and I could see them look in my eyes, and I could read their minds. Oh, here's this tall white guy who's, you know, wealthy, successful, however they perceive me to be. And so I said, let me just tell you a story. And I told them my real story with my mom. And my mom's a great human being. I wouldn't be who I was without her. But when she drank alcohol, which was daily, and when she took prescription drugs, which was daily, she became a different human being, and she was vicious. And I try to protect my younger brother and sister. They're five and seven years younger than me. And so my mom would grab me. I was 5'1 in high school, by the way. I'm 6'7 now. I tell people the difference is personal growth. <laughs> but I, I grew 10 inches in a year, but I was this little guy. And she'd grab me by the hair and smash my head against the wall. She thought I was lying. She put liquid soap down my throat till I threw up. And it would be very easy. And it, for a while, it was true, was to feel like I'm a victim, to feel like the person I love most is trying to harm me. And this is insane. Or to want to attack her back. But somehow, God's grace, I was like, I can take this and my brother and sister don't. And it actually made me become a practical psychologist as a young boy. I had to figure out how to predict her moods, what to be able to do for making her not going off the rails, not get upset, and what to do. And I, I literally became obsessed with what makes human beings think and feel and do. I would not be who I am today if my mother had been the mother I wanted her to be. That was grace that she wasn't. I can say that with total sincerity. Do I want to go through that again? Would I want you to go through that? Hell no. But I chose a different story, and that's the only reason I'm here today. My story is, I'm still in control of my life. I can deal with this. I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to use this to help others not suffer. And that's been my life's work. You really think I would go out and probably feed 100 million people a year if I was well fed? I love to believe that I'm that conscious and caring. I think it's because I suffered with no food at Thanksgiving and Christmas and somebody fed my family and I was like, oh my God, strangers care. Changed me completely, made me care about strangers. So some of the, what if the worst day in your life became the best day? That's your job is to find that empowering story because when you do, everything in your life will change. Now don't get me wrong, sometimes it is a strategy problem. Like, I'll talk to guys sometimes, and I'll say, who's a single guy in this audience? And some chachi guy will raise his hand, so I'll go up to him and say, hey, how you doing? And I'll say, listen, uh, I got a test for you. I said, you're single, right? He goes, yeah. I said, well, I want you to imagine you're with your girlfriend, and you're driving your car for maybe 45 minutes or an hour, and she turns to you and she says, hey, do you need to stop to pee or to get a drink? And I said, and you're not thirsty, what do you say? He goes, no, and keeps driving. And when he does that, he's, I said, I now know why you're single. Because every woman knows. Because every, how many women, when you hear guys say, you ask him, are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Do you need to stop? You all know what you're really asking. You're looking for connection. You want him to talk with you. You want him to consider it. You might need to stop. But men, they don't mean that. They're just, men's strategy is when we communicate, it's called explicit. This is what we mean. This is what we want. Women are implicit. You guys all are detectives. You know what you mean when you say that. So I turned this guy and I said, okay, let me explain. She's not asking <laughs> you know, whether you're thirsty or not. She's wanting connection with you. She wants to discuss it. She may not even know she needs to be until she talks about it. That's how the feminine brain works, right? I said, so what you got to do instead is not say, oh, I'm not thirsty. You got to connect with her. And you got to say, oh, well, maybe we need to stop, honey. Are you thirsty? And if she says, I don't know, say, let's stop, right? And ladies will start cheering because they get what that means. Men don't. So it's not his fault. But then I try and coach him to do it. It might take three or four rounds for him to do it because he's so in his own head. Then I'll go to a woman and I'll say, okay, imagine a really attractive man. You're really attracted to him. He's handsome. He's got great presence. Looks in your eyes. You feel him. And you're really attracted. And you get up the courage to go up and have a conversation. And eventually you say, listen, you know, would you like to have coffee maybe on Thursday? You know? or lunch and he says no what does that mean and women will say things like oh that means he's not into me that means he's not attractive that means he's probably gay because i'm attractive and he's not attractive they'll so come up with some meaning right and they come up with 20 meanings and it's usually i'm not enough some version i'm not enough 
But the truth is, all he said was no for Thursday at noon. Ask again. How about Saturday at 5? Okay. (laughs) So we all, sometimes we miss it because we do have the wrong strategy. I don't want to make it so it's not strategy. It's just usually the story is what's really in the way. Change your story, change your life. How many get this here? Say I. Oh, by the way, story, once you build a story, you only find what you look for. Try something right now in the room you're in. I'm going to give you a test. Sit up in your chair. Sit up in your chair with some energy. Create some energy in your body real fast. Create some energy, guys. Come on, wake it up. Life can be brutal. Life can be unforgiving. If I had to sum up in one word the difference between the greats and the average the difference between the successful and the nobodies of the world. One word. One attribute to describe the difference. Discipline. If you don't have the discipline, you can forget about the trophy. You can forget about the success, the greatness. All champions have discipline. But you're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. Most people give up on themselves easily. You know the human spirit is powerful? There's nothing as powerful. It's hard to kill the human spirit. Anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid, they have happy relationships. Anybody can be positive then. Anybody can have a larger vision then. Anybody can have faith under those kinds of circumstances. You cannot control it, the people around you cannot control it. As long as you're at the wrong place, at the wrong time, your whole life could disappear in the blink of an eye, along with everything you wished you could have done. Whether you're walking down the street, whether you're stepping into the elevator, whether you're walking down the stairs, whether you're, whether you're just existing. Listen, you'll see people from nowhere die of a heart attack, gone. No family history, no symptoms, no causes, nothing. It happens and that's the cruel life that we live in. And it's something that we cannot control. So what I want to make clear is that regardless of the path that you take in your life, at one point, death will consume you. It doesn't care whether you floss your teeth in the morning, whether you raise a family or not, whether you go on to be rich, poor, a success, a failure, whether whatever, you are still going to die at one point. It is that simple. And knowing that you're going to die soon should be the biggest motivation to both make the difficult decisions in life and to get your ass out of bed in the morning. So now the question becomes, what is it that you truly have to lose? I am amazing. I am phenomenal. I am capable of all things. So are you. Oftentimes we allow everyone to dictate what's valuable in our lives. It's because of you I now see the light. You're an unstoppable force of nature. I am in control of my own destiny. I hold a pen that writes my own story. I come to you vulnerable. You give me armor, make me invincible. You're no longer allowed to ask why. Why me? You now say, try me. This wisdom shall set you free. So right now, allow yourself that. Simply to dream. As Joseph Campbell said, find a place inside where there's joy, and the joy will burn out the pain. Now I get it. Life inevitably comes with some degree of misery, and I get it. For many of you, things have happened in your past that are unspeakable. And whether that's something big or whether it's something small, each one of us has something inside of us that hurts. What people think about you and the possibilities for your dream is none of your business. The attitude is it can't be done because they haven't seen it. History is being read, but it's also being written by people with imagination. Is it easy? Of course it's not easy. It's challenging. It requires patience. It requires persistence. It requires a willingness to do whatever is required to create a new life for yourself. Listen to me, there's no excuse and what will separate those of you from the rest is not what they give you. What will separate you is what you do. So, how many of you believe in your life that your worst day can become your best day if you turn it around? I happen to believe that. That honestly, the old, 
In a lot of books you read, oh, there's a seed of every adversity, there's a seed of greatness. You've all heard that before, right? But it's actually true. If you were to go back in your life, some of the greatest trials and tribulations, difficulties you've gone through have ended up producing the most beautiful things in your life. Is that true? Yes?